In this video, we derive a way to measure the likeliness of an event or an outcome occurring. Probability is a measure of the likeliness of an event or an outcome. The concept of relative frequencies, which we discussed thoroughly in the previous videos, can be thought of as probabilities, two concepts that get mixed up all the time are mutually exclusive events and independent events. This is a prevalent among students that is important to mention it now and revisit this throughout the remaining portion of this video. The union of events is computed by adding their probabilities if the events are mutually exclusive. The intersection of events is computed by multiplying their probabilities if the events are independent. Probability is a measure of the likeliness that something, an event, or some outcome will occur. An event that is not likely to occur has a probability near zero. The probability that it will snow in North Carolina in July is probably pretty close to zero. An event that is just as likely to occur as it is to not occur has a probability of 0.5. At the beginning of every NFL football game, a coin is flipped to determine who kicks off first. Heads and tails are equally likely to occur because there are only two sides to every coin. The likeliness of heads facing up is the same as it not facing up. Hence, the probability of heads is 0.5. An event that is likely to occur has a probability near 1. The probability that it will snow in Antarctica down at the South Pole during July, a winter month in the Southern Hemisphere, is probably pretty darn close to 1. An experiment is any process that generates well-defined outcomes. Rolling a six-sided die once is a process that generates well-defined outcomes, which includes rolling a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. The sample space for an experiment is the set of all experimental outcomes. The set of all experimental outcomes for rolling a six-sided die once is the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. An experimental outcome is also called a sample point. Rolling a 2 is an experimental outcome of rolling a six-sided die once. Rolling a 2 is a sample point in this experiment as well. Yada, yada, yada. In this example below, Bradley Investments is considering investing in two stocks. Its experience in investing enables it to determine the most likely outcomes of each stock three months from now. Investing gains or losses from investing in Markley Oil three, from, three months from now include making $10,000, making $5,000, breaking even, or losing $20,000. So why are there four outcomes? The first outcome making 10000 from the investment might be a result of Markley Oil discovering three oil reserves under the ocean using its three research and development vessels. The second outcome making 5000 from this investment might be a result of Markley Oil discovering only two oil reserves. The third outcome breaking even on the investment might be a result of Markley Oil discovering one oil reserve, while the fourth outcome, losing 20000 might be a result of Markley Oil discovering no new oil reserves. Investing gains or losses from investing in Collins Mining three months from now include making 8000 or losing 2000 on the investment. So why are there two investments or outcomes? The first outcome, making 8000 from the investment, results if the Fed, Federal Reserve Bank, of the U.S. keeps interest rates low, while the other outcome, losing 2000 results if the Fed raises interest rates 2.5%. The sample space is the following set. Making $18,000, making $8,000, making $13,000, making $3,000, making $8,000, losing $2,000, losing $2,000, making $3,000, 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 making $3
losing $12,000 or losing $22,000. There are several rules to determine the number of outcomes in any given experiment, which includes the product rule, combinations, and permutations. If an experiment consists of a sequence of k steps in which there are n1 possible results for the first step, n1 equal 4 in our numerical example because investing in market oil has four possible outcomes, and two possible results for the second step. In our numerical example, Collins Mining has two possible outcomes, and so on. Then the total number of outcomes is n1 times n2, yada, 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 times nk, which in our example here would be 4 times 2 which is equal to 8, which is what we found. A helpful graphical representation of a multi-step experiment is a tree diagram. The Bradley Investments example can be viewed as a two-step experiment, and so k would be equal to 2, because it involves buying two stocks, each with a set of outcomes. Investing in Markley Oil has four possible outcomes for Bradley Investments. Making $10,000 making $5,000, breaking even, or losing $20,000. Hence, N1 equals 4. Investing in Collins Mining has two possible outcomes for Bradley Investments, making $8,000 or losing $10,000. Hence, N2 equals 2. The product rule says there, is eight, there are eight possible outcomes of this experiment, this two-step experiment. The product rule is used to compute the number of experimental outcomes. The tree diagram illustrates this by generating all experimental outcomes. The first stage of the experiment involves the four outcomes of investing in Markley Oil. The first stage of the tree diagram shows the four branches of the tree corresponding to Markley Oil. The top branch represents the outcome that results in Bradley Investments, making 10000 from owning Markley Oil stock. The next branch represents the outcome of making $5,000 off the investment. The next branch represents the outcome of breaking even on the investment. The bottom branch represents the outcome of losing $20,000 on the investment. The second stage is conditional on the outcome of the first stage. Given Bradley Investment has made $10,000 on its Markley Oil investment, either will make $8,000 from investing in Collins Mining or lose $2,000. If a $10,000 gain occurs in stage 1 and an $8,000 gain occurs in stage 2, the experimental outcome of this branch is Bradley Investments making $18,000 in investments. If $10,000 gain occurs in stage 1 but a $2,000 loss occurs in stage 2, the experimental outcome of this branch is Bradley Investments making $8,000 on its investments. Given that Bradley Investments has made $5,000 on a smart oil investment, either it will make $8,000 from investing in Collins Mining or lose $2,000. If a $5,000 gain occurs in Stage 1 and an $8,000 gain occurs in Stage 2, the experimental outcome of this branch is Bradley Investments making $13,000 on its investments. If a $5,000 gain occurs in Stage 1 but a $2,000 loss occurs in Stage 2, the experimental outcome of this branch is Bradley Investments making $3,000 on its investments. Given Bradley Investments has broken even on its Markley Oil investment, either it will make $8,000 from investing in Collins Mining or lose $2,000. If no gain occurs in Stage 1 and $8,000 is made in Stage 2, the experimental outcome of this branch is Bradley Investments making $8,000 on its investments. If no gain occurs in stage 1, but a $2,000 loss occurs in stage 2, the experimental outcome is losing $2,000. Given Bradley Investments has lost $20,000 on Markley Oil, either it will make $8,000 invested in Collins or lose $2,000. If a $20,000 loss occurs in stage 1 and an $8,000 gain occurs in stage 2, the experimental outcome of this branch is Bradley Investments losing $12,000. If 
$20,000 loss occurs in stage one, but a $2,000 loss occurs in stage two. The experimental outcome of this branch is Bradley Investments losing $22,000 on its investments. Notice there are eight experimental outcomes, which is exactly what the product rule told us. Counting rules one, two, and three represent three ways to compute the number of outcomes in seemingly similar experiments, because in all three of these, n objects are chosen from a total of capital N. The concepts that differentiate these rules are if order matters and whether there is replacement or not. Order does not matter when sampling a population to determine the average earnings of workers. For example, suppose John makes $15,000 and Jill makes $20,000 annually. It does not matter if John was selected first because 15000 plus 20,000 equals 20,000 plus 15,000. Either way, the sample mean is 17,500. Order and replacement are important in determining the winner of the Powerball, Powerball lottery. The first five numbers can be in any order, but the last number is the Powerball, which must be chosen last. Hence, order matters for only the last ping pong ball in the Powerball. When choosing the first five ping pong balls, the balls are pulled out one at a time and not put back in the jar. That is, they are not being replaced as balls are pulled out. Counting rule one applies when order matters and there is replacement. The total number of experimental outcomes equals n times n times n yada 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 times n. The number of times n is multiplied by itself is little n. This expression is mathematically equivalent to this expression. The red one next to a red exclamation point is called one factorial. One divided by one factorial equals one because one factorial is equal to one. Even though one divided by one factorial is equal to one, I include it here to explicitly model the concept of order matters. n times n times n yada 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 times n mathematically models the concept of replacement. One factorial mathematically models the concept of order matters. Here's an example. Politicians propose a new lottery. In this lottery, there are six jars, each filled with 50 ping pong balls, numbered 150. How many distinct winning tickets could win this lottery if you have to pick the order in which they come out of the jars? Since order matters and there is replacement, the total number of experimental outcomes equals 50 times 50 times 50 times 50 times 50 times 50 times 1 divided by 1 factorial. This down here is equal to 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. 50 times 50 times 50 times 50 times 50 times 50 is just 50 to the 6th power, which equals 15.625 billion. So why does 1 over 1 factorial model mathematically the concept of border matters. Well, what this is basically saying is there is only one ticket that wins in a lottery. If you picked your, if your lottery numbers are, say, for example, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Well, the first ping pong ball has to come out one. The second ping pong ball has to come out two. The third ping pong ball has to come out three. The fourth ping pong ball has to come out four. The fifth ping pong ball has to come out five. And the sixth ping pong ball has to come out number six. So you have to not only pick those numbers, but you have to pick the order. And so there's only one way to do that. Hence, one factorial models order matters. Now, the probability of pulling out a one is 1 divided by 50 because there are 50 ping pong balls in the jar. Now, for example, if the person pulling the ping pong balls out of the jar actually pulls out a 1, right, then you're good to go. So far, so good for you. 
that person puts the ping pong ball back in the jar. So when the person goes to pull out the second number, there are 50 numbers in the jar. Suppose that person pulls out a 2. Now you're thinking, cool, I've got the first two numbers and I picked them in the right order. 1, then 2. Well, the lottery worker puts the ball back in the jar. So on the third, on the third uh, number, there are 50 things to choose from, which is why this is 50 here. And so you need a 3, right? Suppose that lottery worker pulls out a 3. Now you're thinking, holy crap, I'm going to win this thing. I got them in order, 1, 2, and 3. The lottery, the lottery worker puts that 3 back into the jar. Now there are 50 balls in the bucket again. Suppose that lottery worker pulls out a 4. Well, they had 50 things to choose from, which is why that is 50. They put that number back in. On the fifth number pulled from the jar, because the 4 was put back in, there are now 50 balls in the jar. So, suppose that lottery worker pulls out a 5. Well, there are 50 things to choose from, which is why there's 50 things here. The lottery, pro lottery worker puts that 5 back in the jar. There are 50 things to choose from, which is why that is 50. Suppose the lottery worker pulls out a 6. You just picked the order and the numbers. And there are 15.625 billion different ways to pull six numbers out where order matters and there's a replacement. This is just an application of the product rule. Cutting rule 2 applies when order does not matter and there is no replacement. The total number of experimental outcomes equals 1 divided by the red expression, which is called n factorial, times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, yada yada yada, times n minus n plus 1. n factorial mathematically models order does not matter. The n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, yada yada yada, n minus n plus 1 models no replacement. So why does this model no replacement? Well here there are n things in a jar. So you have n things to choose from. When you pull one out of the jar, you're left with one fewer in the jar. When you do that again, you're left with two fewer in the jar. Yada, yada, yada. So we're not putting things back into the jar in this experiment. Because we're choosing little n items from a jar containing big n items. We have n factorial here, and then we have n of these products. So if little n were 6, we'd have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 times n minus 5. n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 times n minus 5 times yada 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 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. If little n is 6, because we're choosing 6 things from capital N items, n factorial would be equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 720. What does that 720 mean? Well, that means there are 720 ways to order the 6 distinct numbers that you chose. Which is why this right here, n factorial, mathematically models order does not matter. This is just a combinations rule. n factorial divided by n minus n factorial is this green expression. And then the n factorial here corresponds to this n factorial there. In this state lottery example, there is just one jar filled with 50 ping pong balls, each numbered 1 to 50. How many distinct lottery tickets could win this lottery if the order of the balls does not have to be picked? Obviously, order does not matter in this lottery. 
The lottery does not involve a replacement because as the balls come out, they're not put back in. The expression red font, six factorial, means there are six factorial ways to order the six numbers you chose from the 50 items. The expression in green font represents the concept that balls aren't being replaced. After the first ball is picked, there are 49 left. After the second, there are 48 left. At third, there are 47 left. At fourth, there are 46 left. At the fifth, there are 45 left. The number in the numerator of the fraction was computed by multiplying 50 times 49 times 48 times 47 times 46 and 45, which is about 11.4 billion. The denominator is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which equals 720. The 720 means there are 720 different ways to order the six numbers you chose. There are a total number of 15.9 million distinct lottery tickets that can potentially win. The combinations rule gives you the same exact number. Kenny Rule 3 applies when order matters and there is no replacement. The total number of experimental outcomes equals 1 divided by 1 factorial times n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 yada 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 times n minus n plus 1. Again, 1 factorial equals 1 and there are little n of these products. This is the permutations rule. The green expression models no replacement. The red expression models order matters. One factorial equals one, which means there's only one way to win. On the first trial, there is big N things in the bucket. The second trial, there's one less. The third trial, is there, there are two fewer in the bucket. Yada, yada, yada. If we divide n factorial in the permutations equation by n minus n factorial, we get this green expression. And then I added the one factorial in there, which is not shown in the textbook, to make sure that you understand that permutations applies when order matters. In this state lottery example, there is one jar filled with 50 ping pong balls numbered 1 to 50. How many distinct lottery tickets could win this lottery if the order of the balls must be chosen along with the winning numbers? Obviously, order matters in this lottery. The lottery does not involve a replacement because as the balls come out, they're not put back in. The expression red font, one factorial, means there's only one way to win if you pick the six winning numbers. And that is by picking the order in which they come out of the jar. The expression in green represents the concept that the balls aren't being put back in. After the first ball is chosen, there are 49 left to choose from. After the second is picked, there are 48 to choose from. After the third is picked, there are 47 to choose from. After the fourth is picked, there are 46 to choose from. After the fifth is picked, there are 45 to choose from. So. The lottery worker is not putting the balls back into the jar. The number of distinct tickets that can potentially win is found by multiplying 50 by 49 by 48 by 47 by 46 and by 45, which equals about 11.4 billion. The permutation rule gives you the same exact number. There are several ways probabilities are assigned. The first is the classical method. It assigns probabilities based on the assumptions of equally likely outcomes, which means you and LeBron James are equally likely to be picked to participate in the current population survey, the CPS. The CPS is used to compute the nation's monthly unemployment rate. Probabilities can be assigned using relative frequencies too. This is done by assigning probabilities based on experimentation or historical data. The subject method is another way. It assigns probabilities based on professional judgment or experience. Rolling a die once demonstrates how the classical method works. If an experiment has n possible outcomes, the classical method would assign a probability of 1 over n to each outcome. If the experiment is rolling a six-sided die once, the sample space is the set. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, because the die has one of these numbers on each of its sides. If the die is fair, each outcome is equally, equally likely to occur. Since the die has six sides and equals six, and the probability of each outcome is one over six. In the state lottery example, there are six jars, each of which is filled with 50 ping pong balls, numbered one to 50. What is the probability of winning this lottery if you have one ticket and must pick the order in which the balls come out of the jars? Recall that there were 15.625 billion distinct tickets in this lottery. The probability of winning this lottery with one ticket and no duplicate tickets were printed. The probability would be 1 divided by 15.625 billion or 0 0.000000064. In this state lottery example, there is one jar filled with 50 ping pong balls numbered 1 to 50. What is the probability of winning this lottery if you have one ticket and don't have to pick the order of the balls. Recall that there were about 15.8 million distinct tickets in this lottery. The probability of winning this lottery with one ticket and no duplicates were printed is found by dividing 1 by 15.89 million or 0 0.000000629 something like that. In this state lottery example, there is just one jar filled with 50 ping pong balls, numbered 1 to 50. What is the probability of winning this lottery if you have one ticket and must pick the order in which they come out of the jars? Recall that there are about 11.4 billion distinct tickets in this lottery. The probability of winning this lottery with one ticket and no two lottery tickets being the same is found by dividing 1 by 11 point four billion or point zero 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 eight seven four. Probabilities can be assigned using relative frequencies, which is done using experimentation or historical historical data. In this example, Lucas Tool Rental would like to assign probabilities to the number of car polishers it rents each day. Office records show the following frequencies of daily rentals for the last 40 days. Zero polishers were rented on four different days. One polisher was rented on six different days. Two polishers were rented on 18 different days. Three polishers were rented on 10 different days. And four polishers were rented on two different days. The probabilities are simply the relative frequencies. The probability of zero car washers rented is found by dividing the frequency of 4 by the sample size of 40, which is 0.1. The probability of one car washer rented is found by dividing the frequency of 6 by the sample size of 40, which is 0.15. The probability of two car washers rented is found by dividing the frequency of 18 by the sample size of 40 which is 0.45. The probability of three car washers rented is found by dividing the frequency of 10 by sample size 40, which is 0.25. The probability of four car washers rented is found by dividing the frequency of 2 by sample size 40, which is 0.05. The probabilities add up to 1. Frequency tables are commonly published in newspapers and other print media. The table below was first printed in the World Almanac. It shows the number of Americans by age group. If converted to relative frequencies, the resulting numbers can be interpreted as probabilities. The relative frequency of the first age group is 0.29. The relative frequency of the second age group is 0.07. This is 19 divided by 281.6 million people. The relative frequency of the third age group is 0.14, which is 39.9 divided by 
281.6 million. The relative frequency of the fourth age group is 0.16, which was found by taking 45.2 and divided by 281.6. The relative frequency of the fifth age group is 0.13, the sixth is 0.09, and the final one is 0.12, and the relative frequencies sum to 1. In regards to the first relative frequency, when interpreting it, it as a probability, you would say the probability that a randomly chosen American is 19 years of age or younger equals 0.29. The subjective method is the final way of assigning probabilities. An example of this is when experienced coaches go with their gut instincts. These probabilities are based on professional judgment or experience because things aren't equally likely to occur in the business world. Markley finding three new oil reserves is probably much lower than finding one. And, although understanding history is important, historical data is not always the best source of information because circumstances can change rapidly in the business world. We can use any available data as well as our experience and intuition. However, probability value should express our degree of belief that the experimental outcome will occur. You could have scouted a football team for years, but during the game, the team's coach is making adjustments to his game plan. As such, you need to modify your degree of beliefs in the plays he might run as the game progresses. The best probability estimates often are obtained by combining the estimates from the classical or relative frequency approaches with the subjective estimate. Good head coaches may do this without even knowing it. Recall our Bradley Investments example. Investing in Markley Oil has four possible outcomes for Bradley Investments. Making $10,000, making $5,000, breaking even, or losing $10,000. Investing in Collins Mining has two possible outcomes, making $8,000 or losing $2,000. Bradley Investments oil trading expert believes the probabilities of Markley Oil finding 3, 2, 1, and 0 new oil reserves in the next few months with three research and development decimals are 0 0.1, 0 0.25, 0 0.40, and 0.25, respectively. Thus, in regards to this investment, the probability it will make $10,000 is 0.1, make $5,000 is 0.25, break even is 0 0.40, lose $20,000, 0 0.25. Bradley Investments monetary policy expert believes the probabilities that the Fed will not change or raise interest rates are 0.8 and 0.2 respectively. When interest rates are low, monetary policy is easy, meaning the Fed is printing money which lowers the value of the dollar but raises the value of gold. When interest rates are high, monetary policy is tight, meaning the Fed is not printing as much money which raises the value of the dollar but lowers the value of the gold. As in regard to invest in Collins Mining, the probability Bradley Investment will make $8,000 is 0.8. Lose 2000 is 0 0.20. Recall the experimental outcomes are 10,000 plus 8,000, 10,000 minus 2,000, 5,000 plus 8,000, 5,000 minus 2,000, 0 plus 8,000, 0 minus 2,000, negative 20,000 plus 8,000, or negative 20,000 minus 2,000. The subjective probability of 10,000 plus 8,000 is found by multiplying the probability corresponding to 10,000 and 8,000, which equals 0.1 times 0.8, or 0.08. The subjective probability of 10,000 minus 2,000 is found by multiplying the probabilities corresponding to 10,000 and minus 2,000, which equals 0.1 times 0 0.20 or 0 0.02. The subjective probability of 5,000 plus 8,000 is found by multiplying the probabilities corresponding to 5,000 and 8,000, which are 0.25 and 0 0.80, which equals 0 0.20. The subjective probability of 5,000 minus 2,000 is found by multiplying the probabilities corresponding to 5,000 and negative 2,000, which equals 0.25 times 0.20 or 
Subjective probability of 0 plus 8,000 is found by multiplying the probabilities corresponding to 0 and 8,000, which equals 0 0.40 times 0 0.80, or 0.32. The subjective probability of 0 minus 2,000 is found by multiplying the probabilities corresponding to 0 and a negative 2,000, which equals 0 0.40 times 0 0.20, or 0 0.08. The subjective probability of minus 20,000 plus 8,000 is found by multiplying the probabilities corresponding to a negative 20,000 and 8,000 which equals 0.25 times 0.8 or 0 0.20. The subjective probability of negative 20,000 minus 2,000 is found by multiplying the probabilities corresponding to a negative 20,000 and negative 2,000 which equals 0.25 times 0 0.20 or 0 0.05. Notice that we multiply two probabilities for each of these eight experimental outcomes. This means we must be assuming the events affecting Collins Mining are independent of events affecting Markley Oil. Notice that the sum of these probabilities is equal to 1. If this sum was not equal to 1, we would have made a mistake. An event is a collection of sample points. An event could be a collection that contains just one sample point, which means sample points are events as well. The probability of any event is equal to the sum of probabilities of the sample points in the event. Since we are summing probabilities of sample points, sample points are mutually exclusive. This is true because sample points are distinct. If we can identify all sample points of an experiment and assign a probability to each, we can compute the probability of an event. Referring to the Bradley investment example, let M denote the event where the Markley oil investment is profitable. Since there were a total of eight outcomes in this experiment, Collins Mining may or may not be profitable when Markley oil is. In addition, just because Markley oil is profitable does not mean the portfolio is. In set notation, M is equal to the set 10, 8, 10, minus 2, 5, comma, 8, and 5, comma, minus 2. In words, only outcomes where the Markley oil stock makes the company 10,000 or 5,000 are included in this event. When Markley oil stock makes the company 10,000, the company can make 8,000 or lose 2,000 on the other stock. Similarly, when Markley oil stock makes the company 5,000, the company can either make 8,000 or lose 2,000 on the other stock. The probability of Markley oil investment being profitable equals the probability that Markley oil makes the company $10,000 and Collins Mining makes the company $8,000 or the probability that Markley oil makes Bradley Investments $10,000 and Collins Mining loses the company $2,000. Or Markley Oil makes the company $5,000 and Collins Mining makes the company $8,000. Or Markley Oil stock makes Bradley Investments $5,000 and Collins Mining results in a $2,000 loss to Bradley Investments. The probability of the first point in the event, the sample point in the event, is 0.08. The probability of the second sample point in the event, Markley Oil is profitable, is 0 0.02. The probability of the second or the third sample point in the event Markley oil is profitable is 0.20. The probability of the final sample point in the event Markley oil is profitable is 0.05. So the, the probability that Markley oil is profitable is 0.35. If we let C be the event where Collins Mining is profitable, then C would be equal to the set 10, 8, 5, 8, 0, 8, minus 20, 8. In words, only the outcomes where Collins Mining Investment makes the company $8,000 are included in this event. 
When Collins Mining Stock makes the company 8000 the company can make 10000 5000 break even, or lose 20000 on the Markley Oil Stock. The probability of Collins Mining being profitable equals the probability that Markley Oil Investment makes Bradley Investments $10,000. Collins Mining makes Bradley Investment $8,000. Or Markley Oil makes Bradley Investment $5,000. And Collins Mining makes Bradley Investments $8,000. Or Markley Oil makes the company $0. And Collins Mining makes the company $8,000, or Markley Oil Investment is a loser for Bradley Investment, uh, costing the company $20,000, and Collins Mining making Bradley Investments $8,000. Some of the probabilities up, we get 0 0.80.